yeah, these are informal sessions. So um, um, if you really feel um, that you want to come in, um, yes, uh, please do so. Write whatever you feel as for questions on the um, uh, on the uh, on the agenda. Um, the, what can I say? Feel uninhibited. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Diana. I'll just give a quick intro to Petra, who is our guest speaker. And Diana keeps adding people yeah. to the room, so many things. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> there we go. Uh, so Petra completed her biology degree at Leiden University in December 1999, and she performed her PhD research at the Department of Human Genetics at the Leiden University Medical Center. LUMC and defended her thesis genetic and epigenetic studies of the FSHD associated D4Z4 repeat, which I have no idea what this means, in April 2005, after working as a postdoctoral researcher at the LUMC Department of Urology until August 2008, she decided to switch from researcher to research support. She worked as a program manager for the National Center for Medical System Biology for BBMRI NL at Data for Life Sciences and supported the management for EU projects on rare diseases like neuroomics, BBMRI, ERIC, again, I don't know what the shortcut stands for, and Orphanet. In 2015, she appointed as a, she was appointed as a project manager uh, for the LUMC Research ICT program. She drafted the LUMC guidelines for data stewardship, coordinated the European tender for the acquirement of electronic laboratory notebook and implemented DMP online. As a central data stewardship expert, she currently supports researchers with writing their data management plans handling data in a fair manner and teaches a course on data stewardship and writing DMPs. In addition, she works on the implementation of the guidelines for data stewardship in her institute. So it's a short, very impressive intro for Petra. I'll just mute myself. And Petra, if you have any slides, feel free to share the screen. Hope everything works. Yeah, I will share my screen. Let me see where it is uh, here. Sorry for having you uh, speak all the difficult uh, acronyms <laughs> from from my CV. It's very impressive. I do apologize. I'm an ignorant that doesn't understand. No, no, no problem at all. It's, uh, uh, for example, the BBMRI is the large biobank consortium within uh, the European Union. And uh, I did a lot of work there. So, uh... okay. So, um... Magdalena and her colleagues asked me to tell you something about uh, DMP Online and how we handle data stewardship at the LMC in Leiden. So a little bit in short about me. Uh, I'm kind of an encyclopedia for data stewardship issues in the, in the LMC in Leiden, uh, specialized in fundamental and translational research. So I'm one of the central data stewardship experts. We still have uh, five more people, but they are all uh, experts on uh, clinical research. Um, I'm involved in the research support desk, which I will tell you a little bit about, and in the project implementation of the LMC guidelines for data stewardship. So uh, where is the LMC located? It's a university medical center. It's located in South Holland. So the, it's South Holland, it's the province. Uh, you can see it over here. Um, we have uh, seven university medical centers within the Netherlands. And in Leiden, we have a close collaboration with the university with the Bioscience Park, which is the largest uh, bioscience park um, in the Netherlands with a lot of companies on uh, life science, health and uh, medical issues, like uh, also the Janssen vaccine is produced at our Bioscience bio Park. And we work together with the other UMCs in the hospitals within the Netherlands. Um, the NMC aims to improve healthcare and people's health from science to, to health. Uh, this is a little bit about the structure of the LUMC. Um, as you can see, we have an executive board, we have the directorate, and then we have all the departments divided in four divisions. And uh, the directorates are the ones that are supporting to the organization. So it's, it's finance, it's the IT department, and there's also my department. I'm working at the Directorate of Research Policies. 
So what kind of support do we have for researchers? I just picked two for you because otherwise it will be uh, way too much. We have the research support desk and we have a project that will, is going to help researchers implement the guideline for data stewardship. So first the research support desk. Um, in 2015, our dean uh, asked us to start something uh, to help the researchers with all the questions that they have. So it's really broad, you can ask anything. But he wanted to have an easy access to support. So it should be approachable, accessible, and it shouldn't cost the researcher uh, much effort. So what we did is we extended the information that we have on our intranet with research information pages on all kinds of subjects for research. So it's about uh, storing your data, it's about legal information, it's about the clinical trials. So if you need something, this is the first place you go to as a researcher. And we have a central support desk where we do uh, triage. So how does it work? You are a researcher, you have a question. Uh, but you don't know what kind of expertise you need or how to get in touch with that expertise. So you can ask your question to the research support desk. And it's really simple. You can call us, you can send us an email, or you can send your question in via the top desk system. Then it uh, comes to us via the research support desk and we decide, is this a general question? Is it one for uh, the clinical uh, people or is the preclinical one? And then your question goes to the expertise groups that we have. So we have about 30, 35 expert groups in the system. So when we get a question, for example, on statistics, we will send it to the statistics group. When we get a question about DTAs and contracts, it will go to the legal department. So in this way, we try to help our researchers as, uh, as best as we can. So usually we respond within two working days with uh, one of the following options. Uh, we request for additional information because sometimes the question is just not that clear. Um, sometimes we can give the information ourselves because it's a question we get all the time. So then we just can send them the information that we have. Uh, we can send them the appropriate links to the research pages on our intranet because all the information is there, but it's not often uh, findable. Um, we can refer them to the right expert group. We can request for an appointment and uh, for most of the clinical questions, especially when people want feedback on their research protocol for a clinical trial, we ask the researchers to join our multidisciplinary meeting. And in, that, in those meetings, we will gather all the experts needed for the protocol so that they can discuss it with each other and make sure that it is uh, up to date and as good as it can be to uh, send it to the medical ethical committee. Um, and then we have the project that is helping our researchers implement the guideline for data stewardship, because what we noticed that, uh, that we have a guideline, but it's, it's really uh, difficult for researchers to really understand how they should apply it within their daily job, because it says you have to uh, save your data in a fair manner. Researchers read it and they think, okay, but how do I do this? Uh, who can help me with it? So. Uh, that's why we started the project and it's about information tools and support so uh, we will help researchers to execute the guideline of, on data stewardship from the lmc with information on our intranet we have a framework and SOPs for departments so that for each department they will uh, make a SOP for data stewardship so that everyone in the department knows this is the way we handle data, this is the way we store data, this is the way we have our version system. Uh, we developed a data stewardship course for our researchers and we uh, implemented tools like the data management system Castor. We bought an electronic laboratory notebook and we implemented DMP online. So Within the guideline, it says that every project has to write a data management plan. Uh, usually most projects are, are funded by uh, NWO, for example, like Maria told you last time. Uh, and then we have to write a DMP because it's part of the, of the, of the funding requirements, but also the project within the LMC uh, have to write a data management plan. So we started to de develop a template based on the existing funding templates because we wanted to uh, to add all the questions from the funders that 
because otherwise we would miss something and, and we, we didn't want to do that. Um, and we implemented the DMP in the practical part in our data stewardship course. So the students will really learn how to write a data management plan with the LMC template. So in our course, it's a one and a half day. The first part is an e-learning. And then you will go through all the steps of the research data lifecycle. And within each step, you will get information about data stewardship and advice and tips and suggestions, and also on how we have arranged this within the LMC. Then in part two, it's, it's usually a morning or an afternoon. We will uh, have a practical assignment on how to write a DMP within, with the LMC template, and we have a virtual case for that. It's, a, it's an observational study about the relation between genetic markers, disease progression and response to therapy in rheumatoid arthritis. And our students will know that they have questionnaires, clinical data, data from the health records, and that they will get blood samples for flow cytometry, cell sorting and RNA sequencing. And with this information, we will go through all the questions of our DMP and let them discuss what would you answer here? What would you suggest if you have to uh, review a DMP to the researcher? Then we send them home, uh, write your own DMP uh, with our template, uh, upload it in Feedback Fruits, and then they will receive a feedback on their own DMP. And they will also give feedback on the DMPs from the other students in their group and also from, from us as teachers. And then in part three, in part three, we just have a one hour comeback in which we will discuss the most difficult issues within the DMP because we usually see that some questions are really difficult. Um, the good thing about our course is that it, it gives us really good feedback and it will improve our template. The negative thing was our template was still in Word. So, uh, what we noticed is that the people would download it from the from the version file system that we have, put it on their computer and start with that version. While in the meantime, we were already two or three versions uh, uh, further. So they would have the wrong file or they didn't get uh, that they should fill in everything. So we were struggling with this and looking for a way to improve it. So we asked around, but also with the other UMCs and uh, ended up with DMP online. And uh, the transition from the Word file to DMP online allowed us to uh, log in via Surf Connect. So when you are in the uh, hospital environment, you can just log in with your LMC credentials, which is really easy for us. You don't have to, uh, to use a, a separate password anymore. We could add a lot of guidance and example answers we make use of the conditional questions in the template. Um, people can send, a, send in a review request via the research support desk. And because we're not, we're not working with the Word file anymore, we have only one template available to our researchers. So we went live last year in February with our customized DMP online environment. Uh, we told everyone in the LMC about it with news items on our intranet and in the grants newsletter. And I gave a lot of in-house online demonstrations on all the different tabs and all the questions and how they should work with the program. Um, and we included all the funder questions and uh, background information from the, from the large Dutch funding uh, organizations. So now our template is approved by NWO, uh, ZonMW, Health Holland, which is a funder mostly for public-private partnerships and some charity funds. So this is how it looks like. It's uh, in blue and white with our own introduction text. And uh, people can go through it uh, via dmponline.lumc.nl. Um, this is how the template looks like. And as you can see, it's a lot of questions. It's uh, 62 questions. And, um, but because we have a lot of conditional questions in the end, people say, oh, well, it was actually quite easy because they, at first they get a little bit scared. Well, oh, I have to answer 62 questions. Um, this is an example of our guidance text. Uh, for example, with this question, we ask which permits apply to your study. And then in the guidance, you will find more information on the medical ethical committee. 
uh, link immediately to the form to report the collection of identical research data to our data protection officer. We have a procedure for conducting animal experiments and we have a link to the protocol um, in which you uh, that tells you to work how to work safe with the genetic modified organisms, biological agents and the radiation. This is an example on, uh, on an example text that we have. Um, what we notice with these questions, we ask uh, researchers, what's the size and format of your data and what software do you need? And we noticed that they were struggling, didn't know how to fill in the table. So we decided just to give them an example. And uh, this really helps because then now they can see, oh, this is what you mean. Oh, this, this is what I have to fill in. So uh, we're really uh, happy that we can indeed add examples to, to help our researchers understand what they have to do with certain questions. So when we look in the, in the system, we are now up and running for a year. We have 300 users on about the 1500, 1800 researchers overall that we have in the LMC. And uh, these 1800 researchers, they are from technicians to the professors. So they're all researchers together. So we have 300 and 290 DMP. So that's almost one DMP per day. And then when we have a look at the distribution, then you can see that uh, overall the LMC DMP is the one that people use most often. Um, we encourage them to use the LMC DMP, but of course, if they want to use the DMP from the funder, that's also fine. So uh, that's the reason why it's not all green. So after one year, we can say that the LMC template is the most often used. Uh, guidance and examples are much appreciated by our researchers. Uh, we notice that reviewing a DMP takes less time. And the questions that we get now are not the easy ones, like can you tell me uh, what the storage uh, procedure is of the LMC for files, but we now get questions on the more difficult subjects like uh, metadata or finding a specific repository. So what are our future plans and wishes? We uh, have to update the template because we have some new developments in the LMC. Uh, we're implementing a new system uh, with the trial master file in Panama for clinical research. Um, departments are working on their framework, so we have to include that information. And there are some new questions in the Horizon Europe template, so we have to check if all those that information is still um, up to date in the template. Um, as I told you in the beginning, we only are with a few uh, data stewards within the LMC, and we will start with appointing data stewards at each department. And their role will be that they will review the DMPs from their department in the first round. And then all the more difficult questions will go to the central data stewardship experts. And we wanted to see if we can with other software. Uh, TU Delft is already working on that. So we will, uh, we will keep a close eye on that and collaborate with them as well. Um, and our wishes for DMP online is, uh, for us, it would be really easy when you create a plan that the LMC DMP pops up as a standard. Because now, as you know, we have to uh, think the box no funder associated, which people often forget. And uh, our researchers tell us that they really wanted to have the version control, but it's something that you are already working on. So work in progress. And that was it. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell us something uh, about the LMC. Thank you, Petra, so much. It's been very interesting. And we received so far two questions. I don't know you're, whether you would like to unmute yourself or, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was just uh, curious about whether you could uh, briefly explain what um, the tool DMS Custer is. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, it's a data management system uh, that we use uh, for clinical trials. So for the data for clinical trials and data that you also get from the from the patient health records, um, you can uh, put all the data in that system. It has an audit trail and then you can also send out questionnaires from that system and then you can uh, can do your research more efficiently. So because we don't, we, because we don't want uh, researchers to put all the data in Excel files, for example. But it's a proprietary tool software. Yeah. 
har vi haft mig. Ja. Så jag gå on with my second question as well? Go for it, Yuri. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering how you you went by and collected kind of the approval by the funders uh, for your institutional oh. template. Did oh, you well, just but... contact them and say like, could you? Yeah, they have. Uh, they they even have it uh, on their website. If you want your your institutional okay. template approved, you can just send it to them, and they will check if it. Uh, meets all their standards and for example with nwo they uh require the the, the questions from uh science here and then they will check does does everything is everything in the template that we want to know and then they approve it because um uh, their ultimate goal is that the researcher is responsible for the dmp uh, and if it helps the researcher to use the template from the institute, which will then also answer all the questions that they have, then it's fine. Thanks. Okay, many thanks. Uh, another question was from Miriam. Again, Miriam, are you okay to unmute yourself or? Okay. We, we can hear you. Oh. Uh, not now. Now it's showing that you're still muted. I'm afraid not. But Diana, Diana can maybe just read it for you. Um, if there is something funky going on, <laughs> Diana, are you happy to read Miriam's question? Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll go ahead. Okay, Miriam's question was, to what extent is the DMP mandatory for which researchers and which type of project? Um, I think it's mandatory for almost all projects. We stated it in the, in the guideline that if you uh, are just going to do a pilot experiment in the lab or experiments, uh, for a grant application, then you don't have to write a DMP. Uh, but if that data will uh, lead to an awarded grant or it will be used in a clinical trial, or then you have to write a DMP because in most of the cases we write DMPs because uh, we're obligatory because it's a funder requirement. Uh, for all the clinical trials, it's a requirement from the Medical Ethical Committee. Uh, also the uh, the, the, the studies that don't need medical ethical committee uh, approval will have to write one. So uh, we even encourage our students when they have a, a project that is a lot lo that is has a duration longer of ten weeks to write one. But if you want to, I can I can look up the the, the exact text and send it to you. That's the good thing about being a small country. We, uh, uh, the the people that work on data stewardship within all the UMCs, uh, uh, can find each other quite easily, and we try to work together as much as possible. So Miriam is nodding. I don't know whether you can see it, Petra. So um, I don't know whether you have contact details for one another, but I'm more than happy to pass it on. Or if you are happy to add your contact details here at the beginning. Um, you can just add your email address as well, and you can just directly pass it on, whatever route works the best for you. Um, okay, do we have any other questions? From I, I was uh, wondering something. Um, you said you're gonna your plans uh, are to update your DMP template, and I was wondering. So I've noticed that when you do an update of the of an existing template in dmp online so it it now kind of uh, version tracks it but um so let's say you ha you have a, a a template and one of your institutional uh, institutions users uh, applies that template or tries to to uh, set up a dmp with that template and then once you update that template 
that the, the person who started with the version before would just continue with that version. And when a new a user comes in and wants to create a DMP, he, that person will, will work on with the new version. Are you going to kind of call in all DMPs and try to transfer them over or how are you going to do no, that? No, it will. It, it, you work with the version that is available at the moment that you start your DMP. And uh, if we have a new version next month, then you will use the new version with a new project. So we will not ask to, uh, our researchers to update or go to the new version. No. Thanks. No, that would be uh, too much of a hassle for them. <laughs> I wouldn't even dare to ask. That's fair enough. Just making researchers to fill DMPs can be sometimes uh, a lot of hassle. So yeah. That's fair enough, but good questions here. Thank you. So I'm just wondering whether there are any more questions before we move on. But if not, I'll just say many thanks to Petra. It's been very insightful. Um, and thank you very much for your time. We'll just continue with the session as it is. But if you have any more questions for Petra, um, either just drop them into the chat and we can always just jump back to them. Or if you have any other questions afterwards, feel free to drop them to the DMP online at dcc.ac dot uk help desk and uh, we can speak to Petra. There's something more coming in a chat, but I don't know whether it's somebody saying they need to leave or whether it's a question. It's just thing. me. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. Okay. It's just me asking Petra to uh, send me her URL so I can put it in, in her slides or add, add a screenshot on the notes so that people see how beautiful her <laughs> tool looks. <laughs> No, but okay, I'll just move on. So many thanks. And at the end, I will just keep an eye on the chat. So if there is anything coming, please shout and interrupt me. Um, and thank you for all the questions. So I will just go through a few updates. And if you have questions for the DMP online team, again, either unmute yourself. If you don't want to forget the questions as we speak, add them to the chat, or you can just add them here straight away into the document. So a uh, few things, I'll be going on maternity leave uh, on, from the 5th of March and Diana who is joining us and Patricia who you have most likely met in the previous uh, events will be taking over. They'll be taking care of the help desk events, newsletter and other activities. So um, there is somebody, please bear with us. Uh, there might be sometimes teeny tiny slight delays in getting back to you, uh, but um, everything is monitored and there is a smooth transition. It's just um, people are changing their responsibilities and we are just swapping over who is doing what, but uh, the takeover can take sometimes teeny tiny bit longer or responses can take a little bit longer as they used to in the past, but just bear with us. Uh, we are here and the DMP online help desk or anything else is always monitored. Um, we also have a few updates from last month. So we received a question, when will be the cleanup of the duplicates in the system done? So uh, some universities have noticed that we were having duplicates of organizations in the system. So for example, if you are registered as Leiden University Medical Center, there could have been all of a sudden LUMC and maybe Leiden with typo. And it's been a little back, well, annoying back in our system. We hope this is all uh, tidied and the back will not be coming back. We, we looked into the database, we have done the cleanup and now there should be no duplicates um, in the system since we went through everything. But if you feel anything is missing or if you notice at any point that all of a sudden there are any duplicates, please get in touch with us. But like I said, we spend quite a big amount of time going through this. So hopefully this won't be causing any problems. And there was another questions, uh, question last month where you were just reporting that if you create a template and you pre-tick an answer, these answers are being actually not downloaded. So I, I ran through the use case scenario and it's indeed true. And that's a bug 
and there is a ticket in the roadmap. I'm not entirely sure because there was just um, release happening last night, so it might be actually already fixed, uh, but there is a ticket which you can follow and I'll actually check it after this session and I'll go through the release that has been done yesterday and write a summary at some point. So it might be this is already fixed, but I haven't checked it. I didn't have a chance to check this before the session, but thank you for reporting. I keep going on and on about this, but in a case anybody has missed this, uh, we are running a training for administrators for the core admin functionalities on the 22nd of February, which is exactly in a week's time. You can still register uh, with the enhanced uh, package. The registration is free of charge with the basic subscription. There is a small charge and there is charge also for uh, non subscribers in case you are interested to see what are our features during the training session. We have uh, divided the session into several parts where in the first part will be just, um, you know, explaining what is the MP online, which will take a uh, very few time. We'll explain also the difference for those who are not sure what is the difference between being subscribed, not being subscribed, and what's the difference between being basic a subscriber and enhanced subscription subscriber. And then we will continue talking about all of the core admin features, which you actually get with both of the subscriptions. And after we run a short demo and explanation how this works, we will have hands-on exercises divided to five to around 15 minutes, the longest, when we will be asking you to create a very short new template. All the instructions will be in the slides, but it will be, we'll show you how it works, explain how it works, and give you a little bit of a time just to see uh, whether this works for you. If you will be having any questions during the trainings, uh, we can open extra Zoom room where we can just go through that. If there are more people being stuck on the same problem, we can just create a Zoom room for more of us. And the good thing about this training for the first time, we'll be actually offering a follow-up. So everybody who is uh, joining this training in February will be offering you follow-up one month, two or three months afterwards where you can organize a 30 minute phone call because it might be that during the session, everything will seem clear and easy and the instructions will be just there. But when you go back to your team and try to speak to your colleagues or anybody else, you might just forget or realize there are points where you actually get stuck. So we wanna make sure you will have a time this time around to come back to us and offer you that one-to-one -one time where we can go through anything that is not clear. Also, uh, because I'll be going on maternity leave and we want to continue posting these drop-ins to YouTube channel, uh, we have now changed the Zoom link. So if you already are very extremely organized and have all of the drop-ins in your calendar, um, please note that now we will start with a new Zoom link for drop-ins from March onwards for the rest of the year. And over the summer, uh, my colleague Diana and Patricia will work on planning events for next year. And when I say next year, we mean from September 2022 till June 2023. So then uh, they'll keep you posted about what will be going on next year. We also are running, just to mention, a user group in April. And for those who don't know, user groups are our sessions where we tend to talk about what we have worked on in terms of features, how we have progressed with anything you have asked us in the previous sessions. And if there is space, uh, there, uh, you can also suggest new features, which you will benefit from. We already have a registration link available. I hope you can see my screen when I'm swapping things around. And when you go to BCC website to events, um, you can find the DMP online user group taking a place in April on the 27th. The agenda is not very clear as we don't know how far we will get um, in two months time in terms of the current feature. So the agenda might change, but if you're already, if you already know you want to join us on the day and you're interested to see what has been going on in a case there is voting happening and you want to be, have an influence over voting on new features or developing uh, what's, what will be happening with the MP Online in 2022, 
please uh, hit register and we'll just add you to our list so we can ensure there is a spot for you as well in two months time. So let me just go back in here. So I think uh, these are the main uh, things from us. I don't know whether you have any questions for- I don't see any questions there. <laughs> Well, if not, uh, we can just continue. Um, so, okay, so if there are no questions, I'll just repeat myself. You can always drop us an email to dmponline at dcc.ac.uk. Uh, do not forget to follow us on Twitter at dmponline, LinkedIn, and subscribe to our monthly newsletter where you can always find out about our most recent news. And like I mentioned, our next drop-in will be exactly in a month time. We do have the new link and we don't have a guest speaker, but we'll be talking about what we covered in the DMP online training. We'll be discussing what might be happening in the upcoming user group. And you can see all of our upcoming drop-ins for the rest of the year. So that's till June, 2022 in the following link. And the sessions will be uh, um, led by Diana and my colleague, Patricia. So, okay, so if there are no questions, again, many thanks to Petra for volunteering to be our guest speaker. It's been very insightful and um, I'll ask you for the slides after the session if they're okay to share. Um, I'll just add them to our agenda. Many thanks to all of the attendees and for your questions. And as always, big thanks to Diana who will be doing this on her own with Patricia from next month onwards. So, um, you will be in good hands and many thanks and have a lovely rest of today again. Thank you too, Magdalena, and enjoy your maternity leave. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. Have a lovely rest of today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.